Brian is hot about what is coming off our railroads and into Washington State. Listen to him. In July last year, 47 people were killed when an oil train derailed and exploded in a small town in Quebec, Canada. Unfortunately, that train was filled with a new type of crude oil from North Dakota, which has a tendency to explode. As the blazing oil flowed through the streets, many people could not outrun the tsunami of fire, as one eyewitness described it. The town was engulfed in a liquid inferno. Firefighters were unable to extinguish the flaming oil. When the fire finally burned itself out, two days later, half of the downtown, 30 buildings had been completely destroyed. <coughs> Quebec, Canada may seem far away from us, and it is, but this is an oil train going right through downtown Seattle, and they go right by the stadium as well. Trains with that same type of explosive crude oil have been traveling the rails of Washington State since 2012. This is an oil train exploding in North Dakota last year. There were four, no, count them five, as of last week, major oil train explosions and fires in North America during the past year. Over 1.1 million gallons of oil were spilled. That's more oil than was spilled in the previous 37 years combined. And now the oil companies are planning a massive expansion of oil transportation through Washington State. These are the rail lines that would be used. These are the ports and the refineries. And this is where a lot of that oil will be traveling. These tracks run right along the shore of Puget Sound, most of the way up to Vancouver, British Columbia. If an oil train derails here, it could dump its oil into Puget Sound. And this is a real possibility. This is a freight train that was knocked off of its tracks near Everett, Washington, by a mudslide. If this had been an oil tanker train, it could have dumped tens or hundreds of thousands of gallons of oil into Puget Sound. But this story is not just about train oil on trains. Much of this oil is put on tankers and barges. If one of these runs aground or into another ship, there could be oil all over the San Juan Islands or Puget Sound. Can you imagine the shores of Bainbridge Island covered in oil. We have only 80 orca whales left in three resident pods. A single oil spill could wipe them out. That's exactly what happened to one pod of orca whales in Prince William Sound, Alaska, when the Exxon Valdez ran aground in 1989 and spilled its oil. Yes, those are orca whales swimming through the oil next to the skimmer ships. Today, 25 years later, that oil is still polluting the water. Some species of wildlife have still not recovered. And scientists tell us it will be decades, if not a century, before all of that oil degrades and dissipates. To give you an idea of how much oil is headed our way, this chart compares the amount of oil that would be going through the very controversial Keystone XL pipeline with the amount of oil that would go through Oregon and Washington by rail if all of the expansion plans are approved. They're virtually the same. This expansion move by the oil companies went unnoticed for a while, but people are now trying to stop it. The Seattle City Council in March passed a resolution calling on Governor Inslee to freeze the expansion of oil by rail and refining in Washington State. An oil train safety bill was introduced into the last state legislature that would have simply required BNSF Railway to report on oil traveling through Washington State so that emergency responders could be better prepared. Even that wheat bill failed to pass. But this story is not just about transporting oil safely by rail or um, water. The more serious problem, of course, is the global warming that we are causing through our burning of fossil fuels. We need to reduce our burning of fossil fuels. It's really difficult to reduce our use of gasoline in this country when the price we pay for it is about half of what it is in the rest of the world. The United States burns 22% of the world's oil, and we have about 4% of the world's population. Economists tell us that one of the most efficient ways for us to reduce our use of fossil fuels is for the price of them to go up. A group called CarbonWa.org will be collecting signatures to put a revenue-neutral carbon tax on the ballot in 2016. I hope you will support it. 
These groups are all working hard to reduce carbon pollution. Check out their websites, they're full of great information. Our coal-free Bainbridge group is now working on the oil train issues as well. We need your help to build a stronger political movement to keep more fossil fuel in the ground so that we don't leave a disaster for our children and future generations. If you'd like to get involved, please see me at the break. I have a card for you. Thank you very much.